Hello everyone. Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about top 10 new supercars of 2020. So before starting this video, please like this video, and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. If you're desperately keen to show the world, that you're doing very well for yourself, one way of doing it is having a supercar on your driveway. However, owning a truly great supercar also, shows petrol heads you have an excellent taste. These cars could never be described as cheap, or affordable, but in return for your hard-earned money, they offer you exceptional performance, luxurious finish, and the power to turn heads wherever you go. Supercars come from all kinds of manufacturers. Established brands like Ferrari, Porsche, McLaren, and Lamborghini have been producing supercars for years, but nowadays they face challenges from the likes of the Lexus LFA and BMW i8. So let's start this video before wasting your time. Number 10. Honda NSX. The Honda NSX offers something different to the Porsches, Lamborghinis and Ferraris of the supercar world, thanks largely to its sophisticated powertrain and aluminium underpinnings. The new NSX was born under the rather, large shadow cast by its predecessor, but a twin-turbo V6 petrol engine and three electric motors mean it's breathtakingly fast. It is not without its faults, options list is a tad on the steep side, it is not the best in class to drive, and despite being a hybrid, the economy is disappointing. The high-tech powertrain is good for 573 bhp and 645 Nm, which allows the NSX to reach a top speed of 191 mph, and 0-62 to mph time of 2.9 seconds. Honda claims that the new NSX's aerodynamics are incredibly efficient, thanks in no small part to its dynamic spoilers and flaps. The low-slung body and aggressive nose will allow you to attract attention almost anywhere, which, as we all know, is required of a good supercar. Number 9. Lamborghini Aventador S Without looking too closely the new Lamborghini Aventador S would appear, fundamentally identical to the original. But peer a little closer and you will see, that the big Lambo has made giant gains in terms of performance, and subtle updates to the styling have kept it looking good. Among the improvements are a four-wheel steering, a dollop more power and aerodynamic updates, which are claimed to give the Aventador up, to 50% more downforce at high speed. The 6.5-litre V12 pumps out 730 bhp and 690 Nm, which is good for 217 miles per hour and a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of just 2.9 seconds. The boffins at Lamborghini claim that the addition of the four-wheel steering system has the same effect as taking half a meter off the wheelbase, and given the opportunity to throw one around some corner, it's clear they're not wrong the icing on the cake is the steering. Which has gone from being a bit of a letdown in the old car to having fantastic fluidity, weight and feel to it. Number 8. Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. At the heart of the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera lies a 5.2-litre twin-turbo V12, the same one utilised by the DB11. It provides a fitting soundtrack for Aston's Super GT, as well as incredible performance. 715 bhp and 900 Nm of torque are the headline figures, resulting in a 0-62 figure of 3.4 seconds and a top speed of 211 miles per hour, not bad for a car designed to take on continents rather than racetracks. That's not to say the DBS suffers while cornering, in fact, fast corners are where it comes alive. 180 kg of downforce provides stability at speed, and on smooth asphalt at least, the DBS feels compliant. This is good news for those inclined to drive long distances, but be warned you might find yourself driving past your destination, just to enjoy a few more miles behind the wheel. Number 7. Ford GT. The car designed to celebrate Ford's 1966, Le Mans win with the legendary Ford GT40, is worth a celebration of its own. The car was first revealed at the Detroit show in 2015, and Ford opened and closed the order books in no time at all. With 6,500 applicants, and a production run limited to around 250 cars per year, the Ford GT was immediately oversubscribed. Look at the spec, and you'll understand why. Apart from stunning design that looks modern, while channeling plenty of classic GT40 Qs, the car features carbon fiber construction, and is powered by a twin-turbo, 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6, producing 638 bhp. Other key Ford GT features include a carbon fiber tub and body, racing-inspired suspension, dihedral lifting doors and active aero. The top speed is a whopping 216 mph. Number 6. Audi R8 V10 Plus. 
The latest version of the Audi R8 looks a lot, like the last one at first glance, but there's a myriad of new tech, and performance is better than ever. The most obvious difference, if you're planning to buy Audi's everyday supercar is the current lack of a V8 option. Nowadays you've got a choice between the 533 bhp, or 602 bhp versions of the noisy V10, that is shared with the Lamborghini Huracan. There's no manual option, but the twin-clutch automated gearbox offers super quick shifts, when you've got the hammer down, and utterly seamless ones when you don't. The Quattro 4x4 system is updated too, and offers incredible levels of grip, and balance with a torque split system, that can send 100% to the front or rear on demand. With super sharp steering to boot, we reckon the R8 is nimbler on the limit than the Lambo, as well as being more conducive to lurid tail slides, if that's your kind of thing. It's quick too, with 0 to 62 miles per hour in 3.2 seconds for the hotter V10 Plus. With a terrific high quality interior, featuring a 12.3 inch virtual cockpit display, and a supple, comfortable ride, only the poor luggage capacity prevents the R8 from being a flawless all rounder. Number 5. Porsche 911 GT2 Rupees. The say it as you see it super fast is, for drivers wanting a blisteringly quick, front-engined, rear-wheel drive supercar. Not only that, but the 812 is more comfortable, more luxurious and more civilized than the old F12. The 6.5-litre V12 engine produces 789 bhp, and will charge forward until it tops out at 211 miles per hour. Changing gear is taken care of with a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox, which has shorter gearing and faster shifts than its predecessor. However, despite the performance updates, it's the chassis and aerodynamic packages that have undergone the greatest changes. There is also a new rear-wheel drive steering system, third-generation electronic differential, torque-variable electronic power steering, and handily, Ferrari's slide-slip control is first seen on the 458 Special. To add to the overhaul, the curb weight has been reduced by 60 kilograms. However, the 812 Superfast is not intended to be a lightweight track car, as proven by the tires which come with the car, Pirelli P0s. So while the Superfast is still a supercar, it has definitely been designed for the road. Number 4. Ferrari 812 Superfast. The say it as you see it Superfast is, for drivers wanting a blisteringly quick, front-engined, rear-wheel drive supercar. Not only that, but the 812 is more comfortable, more luxurious and more civilized than the old F12. The 6.5-litre V12 engine produces 789 bhp, and will charge forward until it tops out at 211 miles per hour. Changing gear is taken care of with a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox, which has shorter gearing and faster shifts than its predecessor. However, despite the performance updates, it's the chassis and aerodynamic packages that have undergone the greatest changes. There is also a new rear-wheel drive steering system, third-generation electronic differential, torque variable electronic power steering, and handily, Ferrari's slide-slip control is first seen on the 458 Special. To add to the overhaul, the curb weight has been reduced by 60 kilograms. However, the 812 Superfast is not intended to be a lightweight track car, as proven by the tires which come with the car, Pirelli P0s. So while the Superfast is still a supercar, it has definitely been designed for the road. Number 3. Lamborghini Huracan Performant. The Huracan Performant may look like a relative of the standard car, but get behind the wheel of both of them, and you'll immediately be able to tell them apart. It has more power, greater stiffness, less mass and oodles more downforce, all coming together in a ferociously quick package which is very physical to drive. The naturally aspirated V10 not only delights those who are dismayed by the tidal wave of turbochargers plaguing modern cars, but it also produces 631 bhp and 600 newton meters of torque. Once more, the noise it makes is more akin to the Huracan GT3 racer than that of the standard car. What helps make the performant so incredible is the point at which the torque is available. From as low as 1000 revolutions per minute, 70% 420 Newton meters of the torque is on tap, making rapid acceleration, but a foot twitch away the Huracan performant is nearly twice the price of the Porsche 911 GT3, but it delivers a sense of occasion like no other, number 2, Ferrari 488 GTB. Anyone who was concerned about the turbocharged 488 GTB not being as pure or exciting to drive as its predecessor can rest easy. 
No, it doesn't sound as magnificent as a 458 Italia at full steam, but it still sounds more than good enough for a Ferrari. And in all other aspects the 488 is utterly sensational to drive, on road or track, and in the simplest of terms is also insanely fast. The best just got better, and by an amount, that even we are still somewhat shocked by. So well balanced is this car on the way into, in the middle of, and especially on the way out of corners, that the intimidation factor has been all but eradicated, despite the fact that it feels massively more potent than the 458 in all seven gears. That's one heck of a combination of, talents to install under just one roof. Bottom line, the 488 might be turbocharged, and mightn't sound as spine-tingling as before, but in all other aspects it represents yet, another giant leap forwards for Ferrari. Number 1. McLaren 720S. The McLaren 720S is not that far off the staggering performance of the P1 hypercar, but sits in the range above the company's sports series cars. It is powered by a 4.0-litre twin-turbo V8 which produces 720 PS 710 bhp, hence the name. Surprisingly for a supercar, the 720S rides extremely well. The interconnected hydraulic suspension soaks up bumps on the road, however, that isn't going to win you a game of top trumps. Being able to go from a standstill to 62 miles per hour in just 2.8 seconds and continuing on to a top speed of 212 miles per hour might, though, and in this regard the 720S is more than capable. To buy one, you will need at least £208,000 for the most basic model, but get trigger happy with the options and that figure will start to rise rapidly. Unlike McLaren's previous infotainment systems, the 720S comes with a much more usable package, thanks in part to McLaren getting third-party help to make sure the system matches the high-performance nature of the rest of the car. So this was the list of top 10 cars 0F2020. What do you think of our list? Which of the above supercar shocked you the most? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.